Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we're joined by SMU head coach Tim Jankovich, uh, junior uh, Chevy Ogile, and senior Sterling Brown. Uh, our format will be we'll take an opening statement from Coach Jankovic. We'll then take questions for the student athletes, after which we'll dismiss the student athletes to the locker room and then take more questions for Coach Jankovic. So, Coach, if you would, your thoughts on the game, please. Sure. Um, really liked the first half a lot. Uh, liked uh, seven or eight minutes the second half. Not so much the way uh, it went down the stretch. But first of all, got to give East Carolina tremendous, tremendous credit. We had had two very, very, very good games against them uh, before and had some big leads. And for them to not, to not fold and to play the way they did the last 12 minutes or so, I thought was, was just amazing. And, uh, you know, it'd be easy. I could get negative, but I, I actually think this was a complete positive for our team. I really do. Totally disappointed in our rebounding, 100% disappointed in that. I thought it was awful. But, uh, you know, could, could, could get down on our turnovers. But that part, we needed this. We really did. You know, we haven't, we haven't been in, in a scramble situation for quite some time. And uh, this is tournament time. You need to feel this. So I, I think it was great. I, I really couldn't have scripted it much better, honestly. Now we'll have to do a lot better in some areas, but for me it was, uh, it was, it was great to be tested down the stretch like we were today. Again, yeah, we'll take questions for the student athletes only at this time. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you in the back. Oh, Jeremy, right. Um, Jeremy, you, uh, you kind of took over there uh, with four, more, four minutes in the game. Sorry. Hey. Um, you know, what was the, uh, what kind of change with you uh, in that last stretch? Uh, just teammates found me in good spots. You know, I felt like I had a couple good looks, so you know, the ball was going up. I mean, I, like Coach said, they're a good team, and I felt like they were coming back. So, you know, everybody was just looking to score and be aggressive. Uh, so, Shani, it's elimination from this point forward, essentially. So what do you think you can take from this game and apply it going forward when you guys are in a tight game, how you need to handle it? Uh, we can't forget what's gotten us here. I mean, which is our defense, our rebounding, our transition defense, you know, staying together, staying unified, you know, all the, all the little things that Coach talks about at practice, you know, they show up in big games, especially this time of the year. You know, you can't take teams for granted. You can't let... Uh, you know, teams come back on you like we did tonight so, uh, or today. So I think we just you know, need to stick to our principles, and that will help us continue to advance. Shemi, just in terms of uh, this team going through a tournament game, you, you, you experienced that at Duke. What do you think was different about it, and do you think that going through that was uh, significant for this team at this time? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we've had a, a good year so far, and, you know, everything's been kind of going well for us all year, but being in a, a tournament situation with tournament pressure, realizing that if you lose, you go home is different. So I think uh, being battle-tested battle with this group is important for us, and uh, you know, getting the win tonight is, is, uh, is great moving forward. Sterling, if, if you remember back to uh, 2015 when you were playing this same team in the same situation, uh, they hit some timely threes. Um, just some lapses in defense. What, what did you take from that situation two years ago and applying it to now when they started to come back? I mean, it don't matter what I took, they did the same thing. You know, they came back. But um, you know, we just got to, you know, like Shimmy said earlier, stay, stay with what we were doing all season. And uh, we got a little loose. And um, we hope, thankfully we came out with the win, but tomorrow we got to come and bring it. <clears throat> Right, for both of you guys, Coach, you just mentioned you hadn't been in a kind of a scramble situation in a while. What's that like to you guys as players to be in that after kind of rolling through some games earlier this year? I mean, uh, you know it's coming eventually. I mean, you're not always going to blow teams out. You hope you do, but that's not going to happen. That's not realistic. And, uh, you know, Coach always says it during timeouts. So this is fun. This is where you want to be. As competitors, that's what you like. You want to be in close games, and that's the time where you really have to lock in and focus. What was what, uh, what was talked about in that final timeout uh, with about a little over a minute left? Just sticking to our principles, doing what we've been doing all year. You know, staying tight on defense, defensive rebounding, and getting a good shot on offense. You know, Sterling, this was your y'all's first tournament game, uh, I guess, since 2015, that UCLA game. You know, what was it like to be back in the postseason and not be sitting at home watching it this time? 
I don't know. It felt good. It felt good. You know, um, we had a chance to get out there and play for a championship. And, um, you know, I, I feel like everybody came prepared. You know, we didn't play as good as we wanted to, but, you know, we'll bounce back tomorrow. Andy in the back. Shemmy, just in terms of being out there in the tournament scenario for the first time in a couple of years, a large portion of which you've had to sit on the sidelines, was there an extra uh, added bit of motivation for you? And do you think that helped uh, power what you were able to do down the down the stretch, really taking over this game? Uh, you know, definitely sitting out. You're watching tournament situations. You're imagining yourself in that situation. But uh, you know, I treat every game the same. You know, if, if I don't come out ready for a game, then it's going to show, and you know, I'm not going to be you know, successful. So you have to have that same mindset, the same aggression, the same respect for the opponent every game, no matter if it's tournament or regular season. Jimmy, you were named obviously the conference player of the year yesterday. You came out today and had uh, a career scoring night, your fifth double double, I think, this season. Um, do you feel that, that you have to lead this team at, the, at this point? Are, are, are you the guy who needs to take it on his shoulders when it gets tight? And um, how, what is your mindset for, for this first postseason that you're having? Uh, we have a lot of great players, one through uh, however many we play today. <laughs> a bunch. But everybody, everybody can come out and have great games. You know, if you look back you know, through the, the stat sheets all year, everybody's had huge games, double doubles, big scoring nights. So. You know, tonight it happened to be me, and you know I try to lead the team in other ways. Just trying to talk to everybody, keep everybody calm, keep everybody's minds focused. Sean, can I ask from Tim or not yet? I'm trying. Go right ahead. Can I ask the Tim or not yet? Uh, we'll start with the student athletes for now. We'll, we'll get to coach in just a minute. We have one or two more for the student athletes. You know, Sterling, watching watching Shimmy in that last few minutes. I mean, is that something you had seen before the season, or did he kind of hit something that y'all hadn't seen before? I mean, no, nah, we've seen it a numerous amount of games. You know, him step up and make big shots. You know, uh, lead us to the victory. You know, um, I mean, it's something that he does. You know, and uh, we happy and we proud of it. And, uh, we just gonna keep riding it. Okay, we'll excuse the student athletes to the locker room at this time, uh, gentlemen. If you just go down the steps to your right there, and then go up the door to your left over here in front of the stage. Okay, now, Chuck. Okay, now we'll open up to questions for Coach Jankovic. Please go ahead, Andy. Uh, Tim, how would you describe – Tim, back here. Uh, <laughs> These are bright lights. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> how would you describe their body language when it got within one possession? Not great. Not great. I didn't, I didn't think our body language was great, uh, certainly, to start the game. We, but that was a little understandable. It's, a, it's an early – it's an early game. It's a you know it's an afternoon game. Uh, the crowd's not revved up yet. It's 11 o'clock our body time. I could understand that one. They had already played a game, and then you could see that we really got we looked like ourselves for the next what 15 minutes of the half. Um, then then got a little complacent, obviously, and allowed them to get their head up. And I think that was the biggest biggest lesson as a takeaway. Um, but but I, I didn't I didn't like the way the look. Although we were calm enough, but uh, I've, I've seen I've seen grittier looks on these guys' face than we did there, and that's why I say I think this is honestly I, I mean it sincere. This is the best thing that could have happened. Uh, we needed this. This this will help us. Um, not that I'm saying boy wasn't it great in all areas. No, we we needed some of the feelings that we had today. We needed to know that next time this happens, how we're going to sort it out better. And again, we haven't, this is one of been my concern, we haven't been in very many of these situations at all. And uh, something else, I mean, I, I don't know what it is about East Carolina. You mentioned earlier, a couple of years ago, we played them and they make, you know, how many, they must have made 15, 16 threes in that game. Uh, felt like they made 100,000 down the stretch in this game. I do not know what it is about this building, nor playing us, that makes them just become one of the great shooting teams in the country. But, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I give them so much credit. My gosh, they could have they folded it up and, and they would not go away. Um, I thought it was critical that the few times they did miss, they chased down their darn offensive rebound. Uh, so, so the one thing that I'm really, really, really not pleased with was our rebounding. But hopefully we can uh, get that fixed and look more like we normally do. You know, Tim, whenever Shemi transferred here from Duke um, or transferred to SMU from Duke, I mean, is this the kind of game that you thought he might have at some point going for 36 and nine of that coming in the last four minutes? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, he's, you know, he's capable, obviously. He's had so many big nights for us. But, but he said it best. Um, 
he had he was tremendous and and he's capable but we've had a bunch of guys that's one of the beauties of this team is that and, and I love that because I think when you're preparing for someone if you just everyone focuses on one guy and you know he has to carry you then then I think you're a little bit easier to prepare for or at least I feel like what if that guy has a bad night but We've had so many guys have big nights. He was amazing, by the way. Shimmy was amazing today, obviously. Um, and he's so valuable. I did think he's capable. I think he's capable of doing it again. But I also feel like we have some other guys that could have a breakout game. Tomorrow would be a good time. Would be a good time for that. Coach, two, two parts to this. One is, how much do you think the second half had to do with this team just not being in a tournament scenario in uh, two <coughs> calendar years? And specific to the way you can learn from it, what are things you think you can take specifically and implement in situations like this moving forward that are going to be helpful? It's a great question and hard to answer. Hard to know what what part of the of, of the emotion. You know, I think I would have said if, if the whole first half we'd have looked really scattered, then I would feel like you know that's we haven't been in postseason for a long, long time. But you know, we, we played our way into looking pretty pretty normal to me. We you know our first half was pretty normal. Other than the first five minutes, I didn't think we. I thought our defense was just really really poor. But I don't think we'd woken up yet. Um, second half, I, I, for me, I don't think it was about the postseason. I think it was more about. My best guess is, you know, we had we had had two great games against them before, and and won by wide margins. And I think psychologically, I think they let down just for just for a few minutes, not the whole half, just a few minutes, which allows confidence to build. And I think that's the biggest takeaway from this game. We talk about it all the time. We've had a lot of big halftime leads, and we're like, you can't you can't feel like that's enough at halftime, and. Uh, and they just kept pecking away and pecking away and just, just you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. The lead just kept shrinking and shrinking, and we never turned the tide. We never turned the tide. And just when we were about to, we'd cough it up a couple times, and then we put ourselves in the position where you basically, you know, it's a possession. It's a possession. It's a turnover away from uh, from going home in this tournament. So just a quick follow-up. Do you plan to refer to it if uh, another team makes a run from here to the Rangers? Absolutely. Yes, in fact, you know, at, at lunch or dinner or whatever we're getting ready to have, uh, yes. Uh, and that's why I, lo I love it. You know, we can start talking about the way we handle it psychologically, the way we executed or lack thereof of, of press offense, the, of the, the way we didn't space the floor, the way we maybe didn't find the grit on our defensive end that we needed to have, the mistakes we made on the defensive end. There were several, several down the stretch, just mistakes that we don't, we don't usually make those, you know. I mean, and so uh, we were we were not very impressive, you know. I mean, I, more mistakes in a five-minute period than I've seen in four or five games. So absolutely, we will talk about that. But but I have faith in these. I have a lot of faith in in this group. They're they're bright, and they're mature, and they're competitive. And and when you're that, you you want to hear those things. You you want to learn from a performance like that. Um, I'm just glad of some that I think that we can draw from. Coach, you talked about the rebounding. Uh, you weren't pleased with it. It's been an area you guys have been pretty good in, in all year. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've been, I think if there's one thing, we have been great rebounding team all year long. And we were really, really bad today as a rebounding team. Now, very fixable, or I hope, needs to be, better be, or we're not even going to be having this conversation, you know, about how we barely squeak by. Um, but we have been a great rebounding team. So concern level after that, pretty pretty low uh, considering? Uh, I'd say uh, moderate concern, and I'll tell you after the next game. How about that? If you get two in a row, then I think uh, we're starting a trend. Right, we can get two more for Coach. Sure. Coach, Coach in, um, in uh, your four losses, the opposing teams had – 12 three-pointers. Uh, ECU had 13 today. Um, might that be an Achilles heel here? And how do you address that in terms of perimeter defense? Well, um, I guess what I would say is you have to give up something. You, you're, either, you're either a defense. A defense, in my opinion, can only be – you can be strong outside or you can be strong inside. But I don't think that you can be incredibly strong on the perimeter and incredibly strong – on the interior, unless you have seven foot something 
shot blocker on the inside that takes away 10 feet, but that's a whole other story. So for most of us, it's very difficult to, to be that way, and so you have to make some decisions in your philosophy and also with your team, you know, with, the, with, the, with your personnel to determine are we going to be better off trying to be strong in one area and give this up, or are we going to try to make sure we're, we're over here? So uh, yes, it could be an Achilles heel, but so could it be for anyone else that tries to you know, play the way we do. You could reverse that and say, my gosh, you guys are stretched out all over the floor. You try to turn it over and you take away everybody's three, but now you're going to be incredibly foul prone. Now you're going to be rotation rebounding prone. You're going to be penetration prone. If you look at our team with, with the numbers that we play, I, I didn't feel like we, we could ever survive a season if, if that's where we were vulnerable. So, yes, and it, you know, it showed up today. And if, if a team can just hit enough threes, it, it, it'll, be, it'll be tough on us. I also know there's, you know, in an in, in NCAA tournament, uh, you know, it's not always easy to just hit a ton of threes. It's, you know, it's, there's, there's some nerves and there's some pressure. Sometimes it happens. and. I hope it doesn't happen to us, but uh, yeah, we, we you, you do have to give and take, and uh, sometimes that's what we give up. And last Coach, one, please. Coach, we've seen some other teams try to do it this season, maybe not as aggressively as East Carolina did today. But what did you think of the press that they threw at you in the in the last four minutes? And how did you how did you? Well, how bad team? would I be if I said their press wasn't good, but we just we just didn't execute? I thought their press was great. You know, they had a lot of heat and had athletes and had hands all over everywhere and I thought they did a tremendous job putting us on our heels and and uh, I love when teams press not today so much but but I, I really I, I normally uh, it's a it's a real positive for us or, or teams I've coached before uh, I actually look forward to it but I, I got to give them credit but at the same time having said that I thought our execution was was brutal you know, it was just it was just brutal I didn't even recognize what we were doing a good part of the time and uh, you know we we probably panicked a little bit, which is great because hopefully we're not going to panic the next time. We learn the lesson. You know, you slow down and you and you make some smarter decisions. We made uh, we probably made five poor decisions down the last four or five minutes against the press. So their press was good, and we were really bad against it. But I'm not again a trend. If I'm not worried because I. I, I I believe that we, we know what we're doing. I just think we, uh, you know, we got a little out of sorts, kind of lost our mind a little bit. Coach Shankovich, thank you. Congratulations thank you on the Thank you very much. Tomorrow.